Hi and welcome to this um, Accomplished Blenders preview video. In this I will bring up a already rendered video from a model that I show you just in a little while. Um, I'm going to stop this here and back it up. This model is a not quite but almost a scale model of our solar system and uh, I designed this because I wanted to just discuss some of the situations you get into when you create a larger scene. Uh, of course if you make a scene that uh, plays itself out on the earth that has the same size as this you would have to have a very very powerful system because there's a 15,000 blender units distance from Pluto to the Sun in this model and that's in blender that's a lot so you'll have to extend the cameras limit it's the cameras that I use in this uh, video are have a 20,000 blender unit limit which has an implication for the star field you can if you can see that here we're in space with stars and up here is Pluto we're traveling to scale at a speed of 40 times light speed and you can see here there's Pluto we pass that and we'll see Neptune in just a little while and uh, why I want to bring this up is because I have a, a death star of sorts waiting for us around the earth or not actually in this model it's in a different model but this is so to speak the prelude to that here you can see Neptune this little bluish green dot here that's growing uh, and here's the Sun and it's a lot larger than actually is in reality compared to the planets and the distances but I decided to make it large enough that you can actually see it to become meaningful so we, you can orient yourself in space to some degree that they always make sounds like that in, in, in science fiction movies but there is no audio in space it's just a vacuum so it's there is no sound um, space is of course to me very intriguing but what I want to bring up I'm just gonna pause the video right here before we get to to Uranus here and um, what I wanted to discuss is just when you create a model that that is a little bit bigger than just the immediate surrounding of, of, of an object then um, the model can become very cumbersome to maneuver in it's hard to navigate you lose track of where you're at you have to have some form of some way to to help you to know where you're at as you're working with it uh, so I'll bring up the model here before we keep going here's this model that that this is rendered from and here's the Sun and it's just ridiculously large it has a halo mm, material to make it look uh, the way it does and uh, I'm just going to try to ever so slightly move I'll press the alt button and the left mouse button I'm trying to move around here in space and then I'm zooming out and like this so all these planets are just put on the x-axis which is a constellation that I guess theoretically it could occur in, in, in some time in history but it, if it does it's utterly rare the, because all the planets have their orbits um, and they're all timed differently and all that you might ask an astron astronomer about this it could be an interesting question to ask anyway I'm not gonna press 7 to look at this from from the top and um, okay uh, and I lost myself okay so what do I do I press the home button home and everything comes back in view so that's a real good way if you have a real large model or you're uncertain of where you're at or what happened then pressing the home button can help you if you have a really large model or a model with what you're really interested in, in one corner of it and then something that you just accidentally placed somewhere else 
pressing the home button could cause problems because then you might not find what you're looking for because then you have to watch over, you know, see this enormous space. Here, if you look at the clip, it ends at, uh, I think it's 100,000. Yeah, 100,000. That's a lot. That means that you, this model, if you would fill it with actual, you know, stuff, polygons, um, for sure my computer couldn't handle it. So anyway, um, so this is how this model is pretty basic or it's very simple really it's just a matter of putting these spheres and putting some materials and illumination on them and so forth um, I'm not going to go much deeper into that right now so let's get back to this space travel that we're in and here's Uranus passing anyway um, so what happened when I first started to render this um, I'll stop that and go back to the model and uh, look at the here the star field here down here in the right hand corner I had um, too tight separation between the stars so the stars there are just a lot of them and it ate up all the memory in my computer it just choked to death it just stopped so that's one of the things that can happen when you have a very large system and you have some function such as a star field which is something that Blender computes and I'll bring up the activity handler here and um, okay we need to do this just see see the memory bar here and then um, um, I want to make sure that I'm on the travel cam. This is also really helpful. The outliner, uh, you, you can just um, find your what it is that you, the object, uh, the travel cam, that's the one, and then control zero to view to it. And then you can see here, you can see the star field, and if I turn that off, that's what happens then you know there's no star field in the view now I turn it on and uh, if I press F12 to render that particular um, well, you can see it takes a while and here you can see on the memory usage that it goes up quite a bit so and this is now if we change the star field We'll lower the separation to 150 instead. And we do the same thing. We print F12, press F12 to do the rendering, and it shoots up way up here. So it could happen that you could um, actually choke your computer, that it will just lock up. If it goes into the memory roof, then that's not a good thing you'll just have to restart it. So that's about the, the star field. Um, go back to the 3D view here and maybe look at it from the top so it's easier. So and here we're continuing our trip through the solar system and here's Saturn uh, and there you could see the jump cut because I had a I started out having a bigger Sun and then I decided no it's too large it's still very much too large but I just wanted to find a point where I could just make it smaller uh, and I decided this was the point and uh, I just rendered the sequence from this you know this frame where the jump cut happened uh, render that to the end um, and of course if you make a, a video that you want to present as a as a completed work then that's nothing you want to have like that you have to have a smooth transit in some way or just do it right from the start but this is a experimental it's prototyping finding out what works and what doesn't and that's 
that's something that you might have to do a lot when you work in Blender. Is you, you have to figure out what you can actually do. So here, um, we'll just keep going. And the, we'll, we'll pass Jupiter here pretty soon. And now things are starting to happen pretty quickly because we're closer to the sun. And um, uh, we're, as I said, we're traveling with an uh, immense speed, 40 times light speed. Uh, and uh, let's see if planets just swoosh by like that. And here, now, Earth and the moon. And the same thing here, the, moon, the, the Earth is just really sketched up. It's not, it's not um, uh, very thoroughly made. But the idea was to try to see what you kind of feel, what, what spatial feel you can get. So I'll just leave this for now. And um, this is a little bit of the silly on the silly side. So you go around the Earth and oh no, there's the Death Star and here it is. Here's the Death Star, the pink Death Star. And now the, the evil overlord is sending out his minions to to take over the planet, and here's this army of Suzanne's just pouring out from this Death Star. Um, and this is just, you know, to show a concept or a type of tool that is available in Blender. It's called Particle System. And you've probably seen a lot of CGI movies where they have water, where creatures have hair, explosions, clouds, all those things. There's so many things that you can do with the particle system. And it takes quite a bit of learning to know how to control them. Um, and in this particular case, I decided that the particles would render uh, a version of Suzanne that I colored booked up and uh, sent out into outer space here. Um, so that's another feature. It's something you can do. You can let each particle uh, rep be rendered as a 3D object. Um, so that's something we'll bring up later in, in some of the tutorials to talk about particle system. And there's a lot to talk about when it comes to particle systems. Um, the, you can use it for hair, for uh, making grass, and as I said, clouds. Also, when you explode something, you need a particle system to drive the explosion, uh, and uh, there's a modifier for that. And uh, so uh, that's why I call this kind of a preview teaser video. I just want to talk about the things that are to come. It, it will not come immediately, but in the not too distant future, I will. Um, make some of these uh, tutorials and of course in the meantime if you can you know find a way to learn it on your own more power to you so I hope you enjoyed this cloud of Suzanne's uh, and um, this this discussion on um, how when you make a little bit larger models uh, that uh, you might have to just you know, do some probing, try some stuff and see if it works. And and uh, don't be afraid to just, you know, start over. That goes for all Blender work, really. If, if, if you find that a model that you're working with is not really moving along really smoothly, then maybe you want to start over, start it, uh, make a new approach to it and find a weather, another way to make the, the mesh flow correctly or, uh, you know, the materials could be you know not working or whatever it is so it's always a, a trial and error process and um, I enjoyed much doing this uh, this little video here and I hope you also enjoyed watching it and um, thank you for viewing and I'll talk to you soon bye bye